today is Dr. Scott Loss with the Natural Resource Ecology and Management Department. And Dr. Loss, you've got an interesting topic we wanted to talk to you today about. First of all, we were going to talk about worms. And a lot of times I think we think worms are a great thing to have in the garden, but you've got some news to share with us. <laughs> right, so probably a lot of people are taught from a young age that earthworms are an important part of the ecosystem. And that certainly is the case, uh, but it's a little more complicated than that. In places like Oklahoma and a lot of the U.S., we have native earthworms, but we also now have a large number of non-native earthworms from places like Europe and Asia. And researchers, ecological researchers, have been studying whether these non-native earthworms have negative effects on the environment for about 20 years or so in places like the upper Midwest of the U.S. and Canada, uh, northeastern U.S. and New England, and some of the things they've found are very surprising. So this isn't a recent thing. I mean, it's not something that just happened. We just never really think about invasive right. worms, I guess. In a lot of places, these non-native worms have probably been established for decades to hundreds of years even. Okay. Uh, soon after Europeans came here, they were doing things that probably brought earthworms, like transferring soil and plants between okay. the Old World and uh, Western Hemisphere. So how are we seeing some of the effects of these invasive worms? How are they right. affecting our environment? So the effects of non-native worms are especially dramatic in places that uh, don't have any earthworms historically. So places in the northern parts of North America that were previously glaciated especially, um, if there were native earthworms there, they would have been wiped out by the glaciation. Okay. And so they naturally now don't have native earthworms. But since uh, settlement, so like New York and yeah, up there, places yeah. north of say uh, central Illinois, okay. Iowa, into the northern Midwest, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, into northern New England are places above the glacier line okay. where there aren't native earthworms, mm -hmm. or there are historically are not any native earthworms, and all that you have there now are not native species, and those non-native species have also become established in places south of that where there are native earthworms as well, like here in Oklahoma. Okay, so what are we seeing in those areas, especially where there's yeah. non-natives uh, up in the north? Right. What, what's it doing to the environment up there? So soils in those environments that adapted without earthworms um, have decomposition systems that are really slow. They're based on things like fungus and bacteria. And when you get a big decomposer like an earthworm into those types of environments, you're essentially stepping on the gas pedal of decomposition. Mm -hmm. And most gardeners probably know that decomposition is a really important process for the soil and for plants. And when you change the speed of it, it can have really important impacts. So when these non-native earthworms get established, we see really big changes to the soil. It gets mixed up. Um, the density of the soil actually increases overall in environments that didn't have earthworms historically. And the earthworms eat away the organic matter and the leaf litter layer in so, these soils. So does that affect the plants that might grow there and the animals Definitely. that might use that space? Yeah, so there's a large diversity of native plants um, and forests of the eastern U.S. that rely on a really healthy organic layer and leaf litter layer. And when the worms get into these areas and remove that, um, a lot of these plant species do poorly. So think things like uh, trilliums, Solomon seals, mm -hmm. Um, some other species have really declined in forests where non-native earthworms have gotten into place. So basically you're looking at it here in Oklahoma. What can we do here to help this situation and what are we seeing? Yeah, so here in Oklahoma, there hasn't been a lot of research on earthworms period, including non-native earthworms. Um, so when I came here as a new faculty member in NREM about six years ago, I had a research background in this from working in places like the upper Midwest and I was very interested in whether there are not native earthworms here. Um, there are native earthworms in Oklahoma, and some of our uh, digging into this issue has shown that we have a wide variety of non-native species present here in Oklahoma as well, not only in places like urban neighborhoods and parks, but also in forests and prairies of okay. the state. So how do we find out what's underground here? Yeah, so when we do our science, scientific sampling of earthworms, there's a few different methods that can be used. Um, one popular method that really depends on um, appropriate soil conditions, the soil has to be relatively moist and it has to be permeable, is something we call the liquid mustard ex extraction okay. technique. And to, to use this technique, uh, we use uh, typical household mustard, ground yellow mustard okay. seed that you can buy at a co-op in bulk. We mix about a third of a cup of this ground yellow mustard seed with, with water, a gallon of water shake it up and we pour it onto the surface of the soil. And 
that mustard contains a skin irritant that causes the worms to want to come to the surface and we're able to just sample them off the surface okay. that way. So it doesn't harm them, it no, allows the, you to kind of see them though. Yeah, it's an irritant, but it's not a, a, a fatal approach to sampling them. Um, they, they can go back to being unharmed okay. af after we look at the worms. Okay, and so some of the ones that we're bringing up, what are those that we're looking at? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple different varieties that we tend to sample a lot here in Oklahoma. Uh, like I said, we have a native group of earthworms. There's a wide variety of native earthworm species here in Oklahoma, and they play an important role in the soil. But what we also have found is a group of, especially in central Oklahoma and places like prairies, we find a group of earthworms in the genus Aparectidea, which is a group of earthworms from Eurasia, and we're not certain what types of effects they're having in our soils and to our plant communities here yet, but that's the type of research that we're engaging on now here in Oklahoma. So for the Oklahoma backyard gardener who might be doing composting or a fisherman here, I mean, there's a lot of worms that you can buy. Are those invasive or native worms that we're buying? Yeah, for fishing, um, it's unfortunate that Virtually all of the earthworms that get used for fishing bait are European or Asian species. That includes some of the ones that have been shown to have some pretty harmful effects on the environment in other regions. So even the nightcrawler, the common nightcrawler, which we're, we probably often think of as a native component of our ecosystem, is a non-native species from Europe. And it's even marketed under names like the Canadian crawler, which makes us think that it's native, but it's really from uh, Eurasia. Um, there's a variety of other common bait, fit, uh, bait species used as well, and they all tend to be non-native. And what we say, not that you have to stop using those species for bait, but if you are using earthworm bait, to not throw unused bait on the ground when you're done, to instead dispose of it properly in a garbage to keep from um, propagating another invasion yeah, yeah, in a place where you go fishing. Okay. Okay. For composting, there's a, again a wide variety of worms that are used. One of the most commonly used ones is called uh, the red wiggler, also just called the compost worm sometimes. Its scientific name is Isenia fetida. Uh, that species is non-native, but it's not thought to have major negative impacts. It doesn't do very well in very cold or very hot conditions, so it doesn't get widely established outside of compost bins. Okay. There are other species that are being marketed that, are, that can have harmful effects, um, species such as market in under names like Alabama jumper or Texas jumper. They sound again like native species, but those are uh, actually um, a group of Asian earthworms called the Asian jumping worm. Okay. Um, so we recommend not using those just in case they get out of your compost bin and into the environment. All right, well, thanks for that information. And let's go take a look at some of the research that one of your grad students is doing. Joining us is Yefgania, who is a graduate student in the NREM department, and she's actually doing her research on invasive worms. So you're doing a lot of digging out here. Yeah, we're yeah. at one of the OSU's range research facilities. And tell me exactly <laughs> what we're looking for. Well, we're looking for um, both native and non-native worms. Um, there's all kinds of native ones here, and there's only one kind of, um, or a couple of kinds of non-native ones. And okay. so I just come out here, especially after it rains, and I go digging for them. All right, so you're, you're sifting by hand through yeah. some of the soil. And, and does the soil texture actually affect the worms that you might be finding a little bit? So, or how to find them? <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is just what I've observed, so it's nothing like in the literature, but uh -huh. um, I've noticed that where there's more clay in the soil, I've been finding more of the native smaller worms, but where there's a bit less clay, um, I've been finding more of the bigger ones and the non-native ones. Okay, so you've kind of probed this area and yeah. you found that this spot might be a good area to dig for worms, so you've been coming out here, is that? Yep, right. consistently. <laughs> so what are you hoping to find with this research? Well, we're looking at how um, the non-natives and the native worms comparatively affect the fungi communities that are in the soil, specifically uh, mycorrhizal fungi, mm -hmm. which a lot of the plants around here depend on. Um, they actually need that fungi to survive. They are um, AMF dependent, so to speak. And so if these not natives are affecting them negatively, 
we are looking at how that might translate for the plant community okay. around. So a lot of times we hear different things about how, you know, the worms take the seeds to different levels and that can affect the plants. Also, the maybe the surface area with the leaf litter. So you're looking at a different aspect. Yes, then. I'm looking specifically at the fungus. So there's a lot to eliminate. I mean, once you find that correlation, there's a, numerous reasons maybe even for that correlation. Yeah, and uh, who knows, maybe in time we'll be seeing the effects of it around here in Oklahoma. So is there also a potential correlation between native plants where you find these native worms versus... Invasive plants and invasive worms? So uh, that might be a part of my project, but um, actually Scott Loss, my advisor, uh, he's been looking at, he's been having his students do a whole project on that and how um, different non-native uh, grass species like uh, Old World Big Blue Stem and what kind of worm communities they might have there. So maybe the non-native worms are more where these non-native plants are. So there's research there's... on that going yes. on too. Yes. <laughs> well, it'll be exciting to find out what happens and where maybe some of these worms are living and affecting our plant communities as well. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for sharing this Thank with us. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. Here.